How's it going guys? Thought I'd do a little late night stream. I didn't actually get my video out today just because, well, it's been crazy here lately. So uh, with that said, let's get on the desktop. Uh, I got uh, Arch pulled up. We're going to go ahead and launch into that and get going. On uh, It's going to be Arch install, KDE install, and then KDE customization. So it should be a fun stream all around. Uh, we'll see what shenanigans and what goes wrong on it. <clears throat> because there's always something that goes wrong on a live stream. All right, here we go. I'm going to boot right into Arch. A couple things I do with Arch links, probably a little bit different than most, is I don't like a lot of the download times. I like to try and do it as fast as possible. So I don't typically just do the Arch wiki way as that's a really good way to do it the first time, which my very first time I actually came home from a Christmas party, made a video about that. Uh, that video, uh, I was a, a little bit inebriated during it, and it was my very first Arch installation uh, through the wiki. So very fun one to check out, but uh, video quality is kind of poor because that was one of my first videos I ever did on here. So uh, on the Arch desktop, the very first thing I do is typically update uh, the, the repositories because right now it'll pull pretty much on the other side of the world from me. So uh, I usually do a Pac-Man S and install Reflector. And if it's not there, that's fine. You just uh, Pac-Man, um, just do a SYY. This should grab all the uh, packages and things that we need. And then uh, I believe it's in the extra package or the community package actually for Reflector. But Reflector kind of makes all the mirrors and everything for us, so it'll find the fastest server for you. And I'll show you the syntax here in a few. So pretty cool. I really, really dig using Reflector and actually updating live on, on my Arch. Because if you don't uh, update the mirror list and you just start installing Arch, you'll notice these install speeds are pretty poor. Like we're getting anywhere between 100 and 400 kilobits, which... Uh, that's not even a meg a second, and I'm on a 100 meg connection, so uh, this should be closer to at least probably, you know, between 5 and 10 megabytes a second. So if I just left it as is and I started installing Arch, we'd be here probably for a couple hours. Hopefully I get this done. I'm going to aim for 45 minutes for Arch install, KDE, and then also the KDE customization. We'll see how we do here. So uh, we got that. Let's go ahead, uh, see if we can grab Reflector. There's the package, We've got reflector. Uh, reflector syntax is pretty simplistic. Uh, I believe it's uh, this, and we can actually do a help just to kind of see what we have. And, oh, I don't I haven't actually have a scroll. We'll just do a less. And uh, we can flip through. You can see a dash C for country, or, or you can spell out country. Um, F for fastest. You can see kind of just a couple things here. We'll use country, and then we'll probably also sort what we have as well. So uh, with that said, let's quit and actually do it for real. So we'll do reflector dash C. Um, I'm in the States here, so we're going to go United States. Actually, I'm going to do a single quote here. And United States. It, it's kind of weird reflector syntax. Some some things have the underscore, some don't. And uh, yeah, you know. Uh, I, I find that reflector doesn't use an underscore. You just need to put it in quotes and then uh, sort by rate. And then we need to save this file to ETC. And I believe that is Pac-Man dash D mirror list. So we'll go ahead and do this. What this goes through, test your internet connection. It hits every single server that does Arch Linux repositories in the United States. It sorts it by rate based on where I'm at in the United States, and then it saves out the mirror list from the fastest to the slowest, only capturing the United States servers. So we're done now, and now we can actually get into the Arch install. So from the Arch install, we're gonna go ahead and do it the cheater way, and that's the easy way, because if you just do it, try and do it from memory, a lot of times you'll miss packages, and you'll just get an incomplete install. So I like to use ArchFi, so uh, I do a wget archfi.sf.net forward slash archfi. This grabs an archfi script, and then from that, we can usually do an sh archfi. Oop, did it not? Uh, let's, let's just cat that. It, it kind of, I don't know if it actually grabbed that file or not. File. Nah, let's do a listing. 
Oh no, it did. SH Archify. All right. So uh, we'll select our language. I'm English, of course. Uh, this right here usually will go down to the bottom. This is going to be US. Uh, disk partitions. You can do auto partition here or DOS. Either way, uh, no, nothing's wrong here. Um, I'm going to probably just do GPT as most people have big drives these days and uh, GPT always supports two terabytes and up. So uh, DOS is fine if you're like on a solid state installing like 500 gigs or something. That's fine. But if you're not, then, then don't do that. Uh, and we're going to just do ahead and select partitions and install. So first is boot device. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and select right through here and format drives and go. And the first one for boot needs to be EFI for swap, swap. And then for this one, uh, what do you guys think? Better FS, XFS, first one I see. Uh, so uh, a couple things, better FS, I did a video on that for actual snapshots and those types of things. I really like it for restoring and using time shift. It's really amazing. However, how ArchFi sets up BetterFS, it actually sets it up wrong. So you can actually use it for snapshots until you do some shenanigans to get that fixed. So I don't recommend actually doing a BetterFS install using ArchFi. Uh, XFS, fantastic file system. If you're using an NVMe drive and you just want pure speed, XFS is the way to go. And if you just want reliability, just the good old, hey, everything's compatible with it, ext4 we'll go ext4 today and then we're just going to mount and config so we've got that done now we can select the kernel how fast do we want the kernel uh so there's a lot of different kernels here and i want to go ahead and just kind of flip through the top three most people don't care about a linux cardin kernel because if you're in business typically you're not using arch so linux kernel this is probably 90 percent of the people want this uh lts this is probably about 9% of the people out there that want this. And my personal favorite is LTS, just because it, it's just so rock solid, works really well. And honestly, it's not even that old. It's almost, it feels almost like an, a Debian or an Ubuntu for me when I use an LTS kernel. Gives me a little more stability and overall just a good thing. So we'll, we'll actually pick LTS for this one and we'll go ahead and grab Linux firmware as well. So this will go out and grab it. As you see, doing that little reflector, Instead of getting those 100 to 400 kilobyte rates on our download, you see we're getting uh, about three to four megabytes a second. So this shouldn't take too long at all. But overall, I, I really do love just using Arch5 as it does grab a lot of the packages for you and uh, just makes kind of holds your hand as you go through Arch Linux. And, and I think a lot of people think Arch is hard because of the installation it is a barrier of entry for many. And I just want to tell you this. Once you get Arch installed, it's probably the easiest distribution in existence. Like once you get it all done properly, I, I, it just works so well. So this stream box that I'm using right now, all Arch Linux. And I use Arch. It actually has GNOME. I felt like mixing it up. I'm not a fan of GNOME, but, you know, I thought, hey, you know what? I actually need to be using GNOME on a daily basis because so many Linux users use gnome and, and love it uh, even though i'm not one of them uh, now for me my daily driver i always get asked this question and uh it's always gonna be uh hey i use just kind of a custom window manager and those types of things i use awesome window manager and a custom theme a material theme on my github so if you're interested in how i set mine up uh i have made a video about how to make your your desktop awesome i think is is the actual title but in that video, I kind of go through and, and just kind of showcase how I set up my desktop because I really like to just flip back and forth between all my workspaces and things. And it's just kind of an, uh, a really nice aesthetic. But uh, for most people, I don't recommend that for a newbie or even really an intermediate until you really get deep into Linux and you understand it a lot better. So in this video uh, is actually, I'm going to leave it up on YouTube and I'll do Q&A after this as well. But uh, I, I also wanted to just kind of make this video as um, it's something that I did a community post on and said, hey, what distribution do you guys want to see me install? And, and overwhelmingly KDE by almost double everybody else. So I was kind of surprised by that because I do love KDE. It's, it's probably one of my favorite desktop environments, especially for a newbie. So. 
All right, so we've installed Arch Linux. We can configure it now. Uh, we'll just go ahead and call it Arch Linux. Uh, keyboard layout, we've already selected US. Uh, locale, uh, this should be EN US. So we'll just go function down. And I actually, it might actually, yeah, no, it's EN US. Sometimes they, they actually put US all the way at the bottom, but in this instance for locales, they don't. Set local time. I'm going to be in the US and I'm on central time and we'll go ahead and use the hardware clock. Now, a lot of people ask about hardware clocks and uh, I will say this, uh, Windows does not use a hardware clock and you shouldn't if you're dual booting. Now, I say that and since I mainly in Linux, I still use a hardware clock and I have a dual boot inside the house here and I use just the, uh, I go into Windows and actually force Windows to use a hardware clock. You can do some registry hacks. So if you're a dual booter out there and you want to use a hardware clock, you can just know you have to do some registry edits to, to really set that up. So, so we got that set our password. We're going to generate F staff, always generate F staff using, using a UUID. Don't ever use like dev SDA one because, or SD, you know, whatever it might be, because you'll usually it'll change around if something changes in your system or maybe you have a power outage and, and something just kind of goes wonky yeah be, be careful with that so with that so we'll go ahead and do bootloader and install grub hey how's it going spash you good seeing you man surprise late night live stream well i didn't get a video out today and i was like hey I've ne I haven't missed a Saturday video in a year and a half i've produced a video every single day for a year and a half and I am not about to miss that. So, all right, we have Grub installed. We've done the bootloader. Uh, went pretty fast there, but uh, you need to install and then also uh, go ahead and do a Grub install as well. Um, we're going to skip doing DHCPD because we're going to actually be using the network manager so we can have that little icon for KDE. KDE uses network manager from system control, so we don't, we're not going to need DHCPD for this. And uh, from there, Let's go ahead and do the secondary script, which actually goes through and installs the desktop environment. So Arch is pretty much done. We could actually reboot and go right on to here without doing it. But we're going to we're going to just go ahead and go into the desktop environment installs because we want a fully functional system with a desktop environment as this video is for KDE install and customization um, right here. I always do Pac-Man contrib as there's some packages in there I want. Now, I usually recommend either Trizen or Yay. Yay's a little bit heavier. Trizen looks a little cooler during the update, but Yay is three letters, so I always choose Yay because it's faster for me to update things. Everyone's always like, why do you update using Yay? And I'm like, well, it's three letters long. Six letters is bloat. <laughs> so that's why I use Yay. Uh, Yoart is also depreciated, so don't use Yoart. Yoart is very, very old. Uh, but a lot of how-to guides on the net say Yoart, and so many people are like, well, I got to use Yoart. And I'm like, no, don't do that. Uh, yay. Yay is wonderful. But, but if you don't like Yay because it uses the Go language, you can use Trizen. And I have found Trizen's pretty good. I think Trizen may be a little bit above Yay for speed. That's why a lot of, uh, I think a lot of more uh, Arch-based users use Trizen, but I'm, I'm a Yay user myself. Yeah, and, and that's one thing you got to really watch out to when it comes to Linux-based stuff. You got to watch out as far as how it is uh, with depreciated things. And so much like when you're looking up guides online, how to do X, Y, Z in Linux, so many of them have old stuff. Like some of them aren't even using like system D and you're trying to run commands and it's just a huge mess for some people when you're using a guide. So if you see, see a guide like five plus years old, I say just don't bother with it. Chances of it actually working are, are very slim if it's really, really old as I've fallen into that for sure. So now uh, we get the updates menu. We probably need to update. So we'll go ahead, launch into that. Uh, looks like it is already up to date. I did have uh, the ISOs from March 1st, so only about two, three weeks old. So we're done with the updates. We can go into the installation. 
we're going to go ahead and just go through each one of these line by line. We're in console right now, generic, we'll install nano, vim, you can do v, but we're getting vim, so that's kind of redundant. And uh, we'll just go ahead, install just the base packages here. If you don't know what to pick here, just leave the base ones for March 5, because it's so good. And we'll go ahead and do all of our utilities. That's uh, bzip, unrar, unzip, everything you pretty much need to to unzip anything from the net or tar files as well. So we'll grab that. I like to grab some network tools. Typically most users won't need to actually do this, but I, I'm constantly using rsync and trace route. So I, in, in any Arch install, I always grab my network tools. So I'm installing this on a virtualized environment. Uh, this is Proxmox again. I, I still need to do a Proxmox video. A lot of people were asking about that, so. A web browser, this is actually like e-links and terminal web browsers. So you don't actually need to install those. Recovery tools, you also don't need those. Moving on to the system, we're done with console. The kernel, we've actually already done the kernel. Move to the services. This is where we do network manager, open SSH. I always do SSH. And that's pretty much it. So we can grab whatever it is. This is an Intel system. So if you have an AMD system, make sure AMD instead of Intel's check. A uh, couple other things, Samba's probably needed for a lot of folks, but for this, we'll go ahead and just do the base install. Also, I'm, I am kind of streaming just because I get kind of lonely and I like to hear real-time feedback from you guys. <laughs> so, I do like that. Uh, real-time feedback's a cool thing. Sometimes. You, you occasionally do get trolled, so... We'll go ahead and flip through these, enable crony, that's for like uh, scheduled jobs and things. Uh, NumLock service on, I like my NumLock coming on when the system boots up. Have GED, I don't know what that is actually, I just always enable it. <laughs> and then file system install. So we'll go ahead, flip through here. I usually expand this out a little bit, SIFs, I'm usually connecting to like Windows based shares or maybe uh, other Samba shares. Uh, another thing I usually grab is like GVSFS. Uh, as I usually am using like Nautilus or something like that to actually connect to a network share. So I usually grab those two things, uh, but you know, pick your poison. You can always install these later. So if you miss a package, don't freak out. You can just drop the terminal when you actually get to your desktop and everything's right with the world. I am totally down with doing some Monopoly on Twitch. I do like to stream uh, a lot on Twitch. I'm over there usually Monday, Friday, but with the new schedule, I am homebound for a while. Today was a little bit wild as I was rebuilding some stuff around the house. I was getting to a lot of my uh, to-do list done for just general maintenance. And uh, so that's a great question, Milan, as far as using ArchFi over other scripts. Archify is just so stinking simple and light. You just grab it down from SourceForge. You run it. This is what you get. Um, now you can download custom ISOs with a lot of this built in. It'll hold your hand a little bit more. Uh, I think you mentioned Anarchy Linux and, and there's some other ones out there as well. I just like getting the vanilla Arch and there's something that's just so beautiful about just coming in here and uh, just running one or two commands and then just running that script on, on what the official ISO is for March. So that's why I usually do that. Uh, and let's go ahead and install our sound systems. I hate Pulse Audio, to be honest with you. I, I always complain about audio in Linux and I was fighting with Pulse Audio with uh, the stream PC today. Uh, I tell you, I can't. If you have a printer, definitely install cups and all that. I'm not gonna be printing on here, so we're not gonna actually install that. Next up is Xorg. This is our uh, display renderer, so make sure we go through this. You can see what we're using. This is just a standard VGA, so nothing too crazy. We're just going to hit OK and install this. But if you have NVIDIA, you have uh, AMD. AMD, typically, you, you really only need to pay attention when you get into here if you have an AMD or, or an actual NVIDIA driver. As uh, we'll, we'll need to install that uh, driver here in a bit. So we'll go ahead and do the default Xorg fonts as well. And uh, generally I would go into here and grab like Microsoft fonts. And I also like to grab some Google fonts. Uh, there's Roboto. 
down here, which I use a lot. But, you know, feel free to flip through these fonts menu and expand on what you get. But definitely at least grab the defaults. And then also on TTF, I usually grab at least the Microsoft ones as I do use those. As far as the input drivers, uh, nothing crazy here. We'll go ahead, stall that. This is the, the big situation. So I don't want to fly through this on the video drivers. This is where if you have an NVIDIA card, you really need to pay attention. You got open source or in proprietary. So uh, for this open source in, in like, let's say I have an AMD GPU in here. I don't, this is just integrated Intel graphics. So I don't really need to select anything, um, but you can grab AMD GPU, um, but we don't need to do that. We would just need Intel for this one. So we'll grab the Intel driver, but if you have Nvidia, grab the proprietary, you're going to want it. Uh, so there's a couple options here and I want to show you the two options. Really the ones you need to pay attention to is base Nvidia and DKMS Nvidia. So uh, base Nvidia, if you're using just a plain Linux kernel, remember when we selected the Linux kernel, whether it was Linux Zen, Linux LTS, or just regular Linux. If it's regular Linux, you can just select the Nvidia driver and go. However, if you selected Zen or LTS, you would need to go to DKMS, make sure you install DKMS. Also make sure you get the headers, the Linux dash, let's say LTS headers in my instance, I would need the DKMS and then also the LTS ones too. So very important tip for those Nvidia users. Otherwise you're going to get a black screen and that's, that's not fun for anybody. Don't, don't, nobody likes a black screen when they boot up for the first time. All right, by popular demand, based on the community post, we're going to do KDE today. Which KDE packages do we want? You can actually select all the things in here uh, and pick what, which one. We're going to go ahead and select that and grab all of KDE. So, yeah, if, if you change the default editor system wide um, export editor Vim, it works just fine, or you can in your home directory. That's also a, a very good one. Uh, probably in your bash RC, if you're using bash as your shell, you might want to go ahead and put export editor equals vim in there. And then when you launch into your shell, it runs that pretty much last. And that export command, put it at the bottom of that file. And I guarantee you, your editor will be changed. And every time you're in shell, you'll, you'll go ahead and edit in vim. So you're, you're not actually in V which is like the GIMPed version of Vim. <laughs> or, or actually Vim's the enhanced version of V is how most people put it. <laughs> but I'm a bit different. Yeah, so yeah, a lot of people always question the legality of Microsoft fonts in Linux. Technically, I think it's uh, considered illegal. So definitely consider that if you're like running a business or something out of your house. If you do install the Microsoft fonts, uh, I think there is some legality concerns. So, um, you know, check check that out if, if you're concerned about maybe getting audited or something like that. Honestly, I, I think it's while it is legally not not recommended, I I never have heard anything of coming from that. But you do you. Either way, I'm not going to say one way or the other. <laughs> Uh. Oh, uh, yeah. So earlier today, why, uh, you know, why I just said Pulse Audio is kind of a dumpster fire and I kind of bagged on Linux audio. And the reason for that being is I went to install echo cancellation specifically for my stream box, which is running Linux. And uh, it uh, caused all kinds of shenanigans because there's there's multi streams coming in. And the echo cancellation worked great for my voice. I was like, ah, oh, perfect. Sounds crisp and awesome. And then I started adding more stuff in. And that echo cancellation module just completely messed up all my other secondary streams coming into the box. So I was like, all right, no more of this, this stuff. So I just disabled it. And I had to do some post-processing. So we get this. Uh, it should be pretty clear as far as what you're hearing with just a very, very subtle music. I learned my lesson on the last stream and being too loud. All right, uh, SDDM, that's our display for uh, how, how we are actually logging in. It's basically our login deal. I've actually done light DM in the past and configuration videos if you're interested. 
check that out if you use LightDM. But since KDE, it comes with SDDM, go ahead. KDE applications, you can check out this and install. I pretty much hate all built-in KDE applications, but let's go ahead and look at full meta. Um, oh, it's not gonna let me, let's do selective. So here's all the applications that comes with KDE. Uh, let's flip through this. There's not too much in here. Probably Gwenview I would grab. I would actually use that. Dolphin is the file manager, we'll need that. Kate is actually not a bad text editor. I'll go ahead and grab it as well. But there's some stuff in here that's just garbage. I think like contact, do they still give that this? And uh, discover store, I hate KDE's discover store. Um, but we'll just keep flipping through here just to see if there's anything else. Console, it's not my favorite. I'm, I'm a big Terminator guy for my console. K Wallet Manager, that's kind of what we use for a lot of the authentication that goes into KDE. And uh, I think we'll go ahead, just go with this. Spectacle is actually probably my favorite KDE application. The rest of these, I, I honestly am not a fan. So we'll just go with a kind of a selective install on this one and just grab the tools that I want to use. I don't recommend doing the full KDE install because a lot of their tools I just don't like. Uh, Thunar is not in here, but we can add that after the fact, Gordon. That's a good, good question. A lot of people love Thunar. I'm a big fan of Nautilus. Of course, Nautilus is GTK. Uh, you, you always hear this, GTK versus QT in Linux. And uh, probably the biggest thing with that, GTK is just, there's a whole bunch of dependencies that go with it. So if you grab a GTK application like Nautilus on a KDE system, you can still use that file manager, but just know it's going to install a ton of dependencies and also the theming might be off because it's not a QT application. So whenever you hear QT and GTK, just know they, they are a lot different. And when you install something from a, uh, like a GTK application on a QT system, there's a lot of uh, baggage that comes with that. And if you're on like a really like a netbook or something really underpowered, you might not want to cross the streams. Don't cross the streams. I always do though. So I always end up installing GTK and QT. Uh, all right, compliments. Uh, let's go ahead. Yeah, we'll grab all that as well. Uh, some people like KDE Connect. It's kind of finicky for me and I'm kind of getting away from my Android phone. So I'm not gonna install that if uh, I was. And we'll just grab some of these secondary packages. And we'll go back. So we're pretty much done with the desktop environment. Now we'll go on to the display manager. We actually already did, uh, since KDE kind of has SDDM built in, we don't even need to do anything from this menu. We can just back out. Applications, you can install Office. Internet, we'll grab a web browser. You can grab uh, probably Firefox is what most people use. Uh, I use Vivaldi a lot, but I don't use it from here. If you're gonna use Vivaldi on Arch Linux, uh, I usually do the Hercura repo. I expand Pac-Man because I hate using the AUR for Vivaldi. Because a lot of times I want to play like copyright stuff and DRM stuff and you have to build it and it takes forever to build this package. So it makes updating your system kind of a headache. So when it comes to Vivaldi, check out the Hercura uh, uh, repo. You can add that in just a, like two lines you add to pacman.conf and etc and you can install Vivaldi. So today we'll, we'll go ahead and install Firefox, why not? What do you think of window managers? Window manager is great. I mean, if you understand all the working components of a Linux install, by all means, do a window manager. Uh, but don't don't ever tell a noob or someone new to install a window manager as that's just bad advice. All right, so we got a web browser installed. We're not going to do torrents or email. Multimedia. I like to always grab the G stream. This is all codecs, playing videos and those types of things on your uh, system, you probably want to grab GStreamer. Uh, audio player, I usually do everything through the web browser. Video player, I always grab VLC. VLC sometimes sticks in Linux, I find. Like, it'll just stay open, and I usually just set a hotkey to kill the VLC process, as I haven't really found a really good workaround. Uh, really good one, simple screen recorder. If you want video tools to record your own desktop, simple screen recorders, as simple as you can get, and it's really great. 
burning CDs. I oh, mean, I don't even know anybody that does that anymore. All right, graphics. I always grab GIMP. We're gonna skip that today. Uh, dev apps. You can grab VS Code from here. Genie or Notepad QQ. I'm not a big fan. You know, I love Notepad Plus Plus on Windows, but I don't like Notepad QQ on uh, Linux. Kind of funny, I thought, but. To each his own system. Gparted. I always grab Gparted. Bleach Bit's great. KeyPass if you like storing your passwords locally. And usually I'll grab Wine and some other stuff, but I like to do that kind of post install. So we'll go ahead install these packages. MPV versus uh, greater than VLC. I think actually, what is it? GNOME MPV actually just got rebranded as. Uh, Rebranded as GNOME Videos, I think is what it is, but it's excellent. I do like videos a lot. I, I do like MPV and also GNOME Videos better than VLC. It, it's more reliable. <laughs> uh, Pac-Man GUI. Uh, this is if you wanted to update your system through a GUI. Um, man, if you're using this, you'd notice how it says QT and GTK. I hate Octopi. And Pomac AUR broke a Manjaro instance. If you look back and you see like, the Manjaro disaster in one of my videos. It was because I was updating my system through Pomac AUR on a KDE install and it, it crashed. It was a beta release, so I, I don't hold it against them. But at the same time, man, I, I'm just like, I never update through a GUI anymore. I always just drop the terminal. So we're not even going to install that. And uh, that brings us pretty much to the end of the install. Now we'll just do some basic configurations for the install editor we'll go nano just because it's easier for folks uh then we have just the basic listings i like to change ls to do the long listing l for regular listing ll for a listing long listing with all files just some other really cool shortcuts when you hit the the command line so uh just highly recommend just kind of coming in here just hitting aliases okay in it and just peruse it because it'll really help you out I know, everyone's always disappointed I don't use V, but I do it mainly just to stay on it because I would love, I, I have done the V tutorial, and if you want to learn V or Vim, I highly recommend at least know how to quit out, you know, don't don't be one of those guys, but there is a tutorial in Shell that you can run, I think it's V space tutorial, and you just go through it, and then you'll be like, you'll be flying around in V in no time, it's really awesome, I love V, but I never do it on my videos just because I know a lot of newbies uh, would kind of confuse them. So I don't want to do that. <laughs> but it is disappointing. <laughs> DT knows what's up. Alias nano equals vim. All right. So we can set up a firewall. We're going to bypass that. We do need to set up our user. We'll just call him Titus. Put our password. And password's done. Once this is done, we'll go back. Add this user to sudo so we can run the sudo command that's kind of needed. So that's it. Back out. Go to system D. We can do like some other stuff, but I think uh, I think we just hit enable here. Oh no. This is if you want to customize. We don't even need to do anything in here. We'll go ahead and back out. Xorg, we can generate. Um, grab US and ignore, ignore, ignore. And we'll just set the locale for that go back and boot we've already actually done the whole bootloader so we don't actually need pretty much anything from either of those so we can just quit i think we're pretty much done with arch linux uh let's go ahead quit and reboot and see if we actually get a bootable system that looks promising So we're about 34 minutes in, um, plus some some intro time, but nothing too bad. Got this ugly, ugly install. We got to change that around. SDDM has to be themed. So we'll go ahead, get into here, change our display around so we get a little bit better as far as the full screen goes. I'll still go with a, a low res just so you guys can follow around easily for the, those on a small screen. And uh, we'll just go into displays next. And let's see, system settings. 
and we'll go ahead and go to displays. Where are you at? Displays? I think it's towards the bottom here. And we'll just change this to 1360. It should give a pretty large desktop so everybody can follow around. And we'll move on from here. So this is kind of like the base stock KDE experience. You'll notice the start menu. I'm not a big fan of this, but some people are. If this doesn't suit you and you kind of want more of the traditional, just right click and then just say configure app launcher. Or actually, no, sorry. <laughs> Show alternatives is actually what I needed. Show alternatives. And then we're going to just go application menu. From here, our application menu gives more traditional layout. I really like this layout a lot better. It's just simplistic and you know get to everything rather quickly make it look like windows 7. no sebastian no uh let's make it look cool we can make it look a lot better than windows 7. all right we're gonna go to global theme and make it look better uh breeze dark is what i usually go with get a little more dark theming yeah, it looks pretty darn clean but if you want other themes click on get more themes and from here you can actually make it look like mac you can really pimp it out and get like some neon colors for sweet kde pick your poison on this i mean arc kde is probably one of my favorites too so if you want like a non-official uh theme i really like arc a lot uh the nice thing about this is it does actually uh change a lot of the icons and everything for you which is great all right so let's see no, oh, there we go. And plasma style. I'll flip through the whole whole scene here. Oh, I need to I need to get some better VMs. I'll tell you that. <laughs> uh, my Proxmox is just like dying. Uh, it's hilarious. All right, I think we're gonna go ahead and reboot. As I think even on my Solus install when I did it live, it was having issues. Go ahead, hit restart. Just give it the initial initial launch, boot in, and then we'll also theme out SDDM as well. But also when you do apply the, that global theme, sometimes it does have some issues. And we'll go ahead and sign back in. Uh, Proxmox is what I use for the virtual machines and uh, it works pretty well most instances it's just I'm using some pretty old old machines back there that's having issues so we've applied a global theme if we go to plasma style you can get a little more you know in depth to where how you get to customize the look and feel uh, personally I'd like just breeze dark what we have it set on from the global theme application style uh, you can choose a lot of the spacing Usually I go with like a little more minimal. We'll stick with Breeze today, but you can actually get more of these if you want. Uh, one thing I will mention too, I kind of skip around a little bit, but I do like one thing I absolutely love about KDE is the widgets. If you go add widgets, just right click on your desktop and there's one non-official widget that should be pretty much official. I, if I was KDE team, I would just put it on the install, but get new widgets and we're going to download there's one called Simple System Monitor, and it looks so cool. I dig it. Uh, so we'll go ahead and grab it, and we'll install it. It's just one of my favorite KDE widgets. I, and I'm not a big desktop widget guy. It's just neat seeing what's going on with your system. You can see how much memory you have, how, much, how hard your system's working, uh, all those things. So we're going to go ahead. We've got it installed now. We can actually go ahead and add the widget now that it's actually on the system. We'll go simple, simple monitor, drop it on the desktop, and close that out. And let's cus configure this a little bit. I usually go with like a crystal, or you can go translucent as well. So if we hit apply, let's see. Yeah, you can go that or crystal, go completely see through. I kind of like that in translucent, just give it, give it that. And I think there's something. Ah! 
Yeah, I might have some kids that I think I think are inside watching videos, so it's bogging my connection down here. But whatever. It's all good. You guys got it. All right, so that's one widget I really love, and you can drag this across your desktop and things. Really great. I love that widget. It's probably one of my favorite things about KDE. So it and it it is a bit like a default conky, and uh, it's just very very simple to use. So that's why I like it. And one second here, I'm gonna actually minimize. I am having issues with this machine. What is it doing? Doing a whole lot of nothing. That's what it's doing. <laughs> uh, it might be maxing out the memory usage. We can throw some more memory at it if need be. Uh, but we'll go ahead and come back into here. I just wanted to see real fast if it caught back up or not. It didn't. Ah, come on. Disappointing. Try and go a different way here. See if we can't get some responsiveness. Eh, there we go. All right, we're back. Ah, I see what it's doing. Okay. So colors, you can choose custom colors, fonts. Uh, let's discard that. You can choose custom fonts. Yeah, we'll go through. I'm not going to click every single one of these. Uh, another big thing I like to do is workstation behavior. Uh, Barfin. I am using GNOME. That's actually what I'm streaming on. It's GNOME 3.36. So I should have actually done that in the video, but it was my stream box. So uh, we'll go ahead. Discard changes. Workstation behavior. I do like to run multiple workspaces. And by default, there is no workspaces or virtual desktops is what KDE calls them. So I'm going to add a secondary desktop down here. And we're gonna and apply that. So what this does is gives you two workspaces to work off of. So if you've got a single monitor, definitely grab a secondary virtual desktop without without saying anything. You you need that. Um, and then the second thing that I would like to do is kind of go through shortcuts uh, because one of the big things if you go into Kwin, you can actually customize how to access these. So you can switch to certain desktops. So let's expand this out a little bit. We'll just go full screen with it. But we have two desktops by default, control F1 and control F2 um, comparatively. So control F1 will switch to desktop one, which is what we're on. Control F2 will switch over to a fresh desktop for us. So having virtual desktops, learn to use them, learn to love them. It'll save you so much time and it'll kind of prepare you for tiling window managers and uh, more of the advanced stuff down the road. So. I definitely always be using workspaces or they call it uh, virtual desktops one in the same kind of kind of the same thing definitely do that but also customize uh, a lot of these so uh, I like to customize my file browser to always be meta e which is the Windows key and e uh, fun fact if you're a Windows user uh, Windows key and e also launches Windows Explorer so I usually match up a lot of my hotkeys with Windows and Linux so no matter what I'm in I'm, I don't really uh, I always have kind of the same hotkeys Linux, I have way more ability to launch custom stuff. So if I wanted to make a hotkey for, let's say, console, which uh, we probably should put, we'll put in here, system, console, okay. And you could do like, hey, let's make it control T. Just do custom, click that, control T. And, oh, it's actually a different one. So let's uh, control shift T. Yeah, there we go. And this will basically launch console. So we hit apply to this and uh, you can do whatever program you want. That's the beauty of Linux. Why I like it so much because when I'm in here and I'm like, oh, you know what? I need to drop there and update my system so I could uh, uh, do that right from here and just launch right into console just by making that simple shortcut. Definitely always customize, use, use workspaces and then right after workspaces, figure out your hotkeys because this will make you so much more effective. Uh, so with that, uh, I'm going to go ahead, keep going through this menu. 
start up and shut down. This is probably where we can modify that ugly, ugly theme. Definitely put this in, apply, uh, and we will go ahead and uh, change our startup screen. It's on, I think, Maldives by, by default. I'm actually saying that wrong, but whatever. You got it. Uh, switch it to Breeze or even Ella Run. But you can also get more login screens. But change your login screen. Otherwise, people are going to make fun of you and go, Oh my God, it looks like you're something out of like the 90s. Uh, customize it. And just use an SDDM. You can just come in here and do this. Auto start. This is a fun one where you can just put script files and desktop files. KDE makes it so darn easy for you. Also, fun fact, if you do alt and space, eh, it's on my actual main box now, but alt and space, it'll actually give you a quick run box. It uses what's called KRunner, and you can run any program that you possibly want with an alt and a space. So uh, I'm going to go ahead, skip around, get back here. So with that, we'll go search. Now, one thing I don't like about KDE that I have to mention is Baloo, which is its file service or file search. I don't like file search at all. I, I don't like it in Windows. I don't like it in Linux. Uh, it's just kind of a resource hog and I know where my files are. So I don't typically ever like file search on. So I actually come in here, disable file search, hit apply, and then I don't ever have to worry about it. So could you try and run on your Pi's terminal? interface to a main rig in the house hmm i'll have to think about that sebastian i bet i could rig something up i always say anything can be done given enough resources and those resources are simply time and money and that's it uh so if uh <laughs> for me it's usually do i have enough time <laughs> uh but for some you know if it's a you know whatever that project is in it uh, sometimes money comes into play as well but those two things are always the factor in getting something to work Whenever someone says, can this be done? I'm like, well, of course it can. Anything can be done and accomplished. You just need enough time and money. Uh, so, uh, fun fact. All right, so personalization, just um, not too much. I actually change in personalization. I'm actually not gonna go through each of these tabs. Uh, network connections. A fun thing I probably should share out of here is the VPN that actually comes into here. It doesn't do a great job with OpenVPN and also IPsec um, L2TP. So if you're you're interfacing with a Ubiquity line, uh, just know that you're gonna have to do some other modifications to really make this work. You can make them work, but it's not a very simple process. So setting up a VPN on uh, Network Manager sometimes can be a pain. I really am a big fan of OpenVPN if you're going the VPN route as I think it's, it's probably one of the most secure when it comes to VPNs. Uh, but a lot of businesses still use L2TP and uh, PTPP VPNs really should not be used ever in anyone's lifespan past 2005. <laughs> but occasionally I'll still run into one and I'm like, no, what are you guys doing? You bunch of noobs. All right. Moving back forward, so uh, network connection is not really going to change anything. But one thing I should mention out of here, you can set a manual IP address. So you can actually go from DHCP, go to manual, and actually set a manual IP all from the GUI. So that's one of the things I really like about KDE, and that's why desktop environments are so important, is having this functionality and having everything from the actual settings menu is really nice. So uh, actually, I'm going to discard that. Uh, display and monitor, we were already in here kind of just changing some stuff. But uh, the scaling in here, scaling in KDE is kind of like, it's okay, but it's not great. If you got a 4K monitor, I don't really like KDE scaling. Um, you know, pick your poison on that. Uh, other desktop environments, I think, do a better job of scaling. I hate to say it, but GNOME and also uh, Deepin. Deepin does a great job of scaling. <laughs> IPv6 is bloat. I agree with that, DT. There is no, no way. I, I just, I refuse to learn IPv6, which is horrible because that's my day job. I'm always in and out of network and I, I can, if I'm looking up IPv6, I hate to say this, I just cheat and I just pull up the cheat sheet on the web and, you know, go from there, type in my IP and then have it translate. I'm like, okay, copy paste. Uh, but 
whatever. All right, moving on. Uh, energy saving. This is one thing under power management. I do. I always say Linux, not great with energy saving or power saving. Um, KDE, I've always, it's kind of a mixed bag. Sometimes suspend does work for me. Sometimes it doesn't. Um, it just depends on the hardware you're on. Some hardware works better than others. So if you do have problems and you find like your Linux box not shutting down properly or you're not coming back from a suspend or you're, you're just locked up after walking away for a couple hours, come to this screen, disable suspend session. Uh, I think GNOME suspends by default. One thing, another thing I hate about GNOME. Why are you doing auto suspend by default? Like who uses suspend? Now watch everybody in chat say I use suspend. <laughs> but i usually turn off energy saving button handling i usually actually like to just go straight into a shutdown when i get a button a power button press so those are the things i like to change in energy saving uh, activity settings nothing printers removable storage nothing else here we're pretty much good with settings we'll leave simple monitor we do have k console up let's go ahead do some stuff in terminal show a basic update uh, see how it does those types of things. So let's edit our current profile. I'm going to make this bigger so everyone can see it in the audience. And uh, let's flip through here. God, I haven't used console in forever. Come on. Manage profile. Where is it? You know what? Screw it. <laughs> Everybody's like, no, I'm just going to install a different terminal. <laughs> yeah, 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 I know. Uh, shoot me later, whatever. It's it's all good. I like Terminator. I, I don't like console that much. Uh, so we'll use Terminator. And we're going to change this because I know how to work it pretty well. All right, I like to change the font to monospace. Makes me feel like a hacker. So great. And we'll up that so everybody and everybody can see. We'll go ahead and do an 18 colors. I'm a big fan of green on black. And background. Let's add a little transparency. Not too much though. We'll just go ahead and do like 79. Alright. Oh yes. Bob. Yakue. Or Yakwake. I'm telling you, everyone always cringes. Any Linux vets in the audience always cringe when I'm, I'm pronouncing stuff because I always pronounce it wrong. But that's a great one. It's a drop-down terminal. Uh, Yakue. Yakwek. Whatever. You guys know what I'm saying. It's, yeah. Right, I'm just going to type it out. That. That's a drop-down terminal. I think it's like Control F4 or something like that by default. It's a key binding, and then it just always drops down. And then, you, you know, you, you finish it, you just hit your hotkey, and it just kind of pulls itself back up. Really kind of cool. Um, but needless to say, we're not going to do that today. All right, let's do a basic system update. Yay, SYU. People say, why don't I just use Pac-Man for that? And I always use Yay just because, well, it's faster. <laughs> and I don't really install too much from the AUR. Whenever you do Yay, it will update your AUR, which is your Arch user repository, if you're on Arch Linux and uh, pac-man won't so good example if you're in a rush use pac-man uh, but i usually always like keeping everything up to date ah it's f12 thank you for the correction there guys f12 is the drop down terminal when using that one all right so i always do a neo fetch it, it just every single time got to do a neo fetch with a system so uh neo fetch boom arch linux there's what we got on the screen. Oh, I love it. So great. Uh, 16 minutes of uptime. Plasma. K wins the window manager. Of course, that comes with KDE. And we switched out everything to Breeze Dark to give it the kind of dark mode appearance. Switched our terminal over. Uh, just an old, not even three gigs, uh, four virtual CPUs, and uh, about four gigs of memory. Only 500 megs used on this system. So pretty darn good glorious arch so many people always make arch to be like this hacker system or something super duper hard to do it is the easiest distribution in existence in my opinion i am telling you once you get through the install which i just cheat nowadays you guys saw it i just use archify it takes maybe 30 minutes 
and it just goes right through, installs everything I need, gets my desktop environment exactly how I need it, and then I just pop in here, customize a couple things on KDE, maybe add a widget or two, throw my shortcuts in, grab a couple of my programs, launch in here, and that's it. I mean, uh, there's not too much else. Is there anything else that you guys would like to see? I will jump over to chat here. We'll take some questions and uh, maybe explain a couple things. But over, overall, Arch Linux with KDE, with that customization, everyone always makes it out to be like the bad guy and it's super hard. But we're 55 minutes in, about 10 minutes over what I wanted it to be for the full install, desktop environment, and customization. Um, but still under an hour and not very many actual distros when you get down to it can do the whole install and we're only using this old crappy system that's about seven years old now as a host and not great but i if i had a fast system i could probably do it in under 30 minutes very very good i love this absolutely love this and packages installed all together 728 packages have you ever tried lxqt so awesome paul uh, LXQT is a fantastic lightweight distribution. If you're out there and you want something that uh, just works on like a calculator, LXQT is your desktop environment. If you have an old crappy system, LXQT got you covered. So I love that desktop environment. LXQT is great. Uh, I can't, uh, just so great. What's the desktop tower in the background? Don, glad you asked. This got built. This is the new stream PC. So this whole stream PC was set up, I wanted to make a full Arch Linux video production, and I wanted to make it so seamless that I could just get on here, live stream, record the entire video, and then afterwards maybe chop out the intro that says, hey, stream is starting, and then it's published forever, and then people can get value out of this video years in the future, even though it was a live stream, and it still has really good production quality. So that, that's what that is, but I did build it uh, live on stream when I was on Twitch. So if uh, you want to jump on there, you, you totally can. It, it's, uh, I think the whole build process, I think it was like maybe three or four hours. So I don't really live stream that type of stuff on YouTube as I like to try and keep it around about an hour for these live streams. Video idea for you, RAM disk, compiling, and video editing. Oh, that's a good one, Peter. I was, I was using the real-time kernel a little bit on the live stream as I noticed a little delay. Like, right now, there's a little delay. It's bothering me. But uh, real-time kernel sometimes takes care of that, but with what I'm using with a Magewell card in there, I can't really use the Magewell kernel. So, As a new Linux user, it's very hard to set up Manjaro for gaming. I know Pop! OS is easier to set up, but I've never heard... I've heard Arch is a lot more powerful. Um, Linux is Linux, man. Um, honestly, Pop or Manjaro, pretty easy. Uh, I did a full video. Actually, I think it was a live stream. It was about an hour long, but I did the entire Manjaro gaming setup uh, that I built a whole PC dedicated to streaming on. And it was great. I absolutely loved uh, Manjaro for streaming and gaming. And I think any Arch or Arch-based system has a little leg up on a Debian system, uh, which, you know, Pop! OS is based on Ubuntu, which is based on Debian. They're all kind of one in the same. Have you forgotten about the Alpine Linux video? Sebastian, I have. But I will, I'll get around to it, man. Uh, but, uh, yeah, no, that's it. Uh... What's so good about the Linux Zen kernel? That's a good one. Uh, Linux Zen's optimized for, for desktop. I actually was running out on this for a little bit. Um, if you're a big desktop user, Linux Zen has some more desktop optimizations. Most people don't realize, but most of Linux stuff is built for servers. It's really built for high-end businesses and that type of thing with that in mind. That's why we see issues in the sound space, the power management space, because servers don't need power management. They don't need sound. They don't need a lot of the things that Linux actually still struggles with a little bit, or not not ahead of Windows on, um, I should say. So uh, you can still get sound and everything working and power management working. It's just the experience in Windows I find to be maybe a little bit better than Linux when it comes to sound and power management. 
And uh, that's mainly because Linux is really geared towards businesses. And uh, I really find that it's really starting to shine in the desktop space. In the last couple of years, it has come so far that I've used it as a daily driver for a year and a half ever since I started my YouTube channel. So, so, so good. Love it. Love it. Uh, but yeah, every everybody can... you. You, at the end of the day, too many people obsess over what distro to choose, and you need to learn more about Linux. If you're, if you think it's a distro that's going to make you be able to do X, Y, Z, you need to learn more about Linux. I don't care what distro you're on; you can put me on anything. I can do pretty much just the same thing I can do on Arch or Debian or whatever. It might take me a little longer on that distro because of. Uh, I, I might not know it as well, but at this end of the day, uh, you know, they have different package managers, maybe a different look, but it, they're all running the Linux kernel and you can pretty much build any package on any system, some more harder than others for sure. Uh, Arch, I find, is the easiest. So, best window manager for Arch. Uh, Lucas, um, i3 is where most people start with uh, window managers. I think uh, DT is a big Qtile fan, uh, which is DistroTube, and I'm a big fan of awesome window manager. Window managers are just such a personal experience, and it just depends on what you want. All of them are great. All of them have their strengths and weaknesses, but at the end of the day, they're, they're not a complete desktop environment. So if you're a newbie, definitely install it in a VM first. Get your feet wet. Don't put it on your main system, as you're gonna struggle. You said you were lagging earlier. Have you looked at Ubiquiti's Dream Machine Pro? Uh, I have not, Genesis. Uh, I do have this. Yeah. Uh. Uh. Ah, come on, focus. Focus, camera. Wait. Here. Unify, Security Gateway, Pro. <laughs> yeah, I, I picked that guy up, so I'll probably throw that in. Um, I still like PFSense a lot, though. Uh, I just had some extra, so, yeah, leftovers from a job, and, uh, you know, I'll probably end up throwing that in, but I do like Ubiquity stuff for the most part, I like their, they do make things simple, which is nice, but I still like PFSense's ability to get in and do it, and it's open sourced, so you can just do more with open uh, PFSense compared to, like, a Ubiquity product. PFSense has great open VPN, which is fantastic. It's so good. So good. Oh, I love open VPN. It beats the pants out of L2TP or PTPP for VPNs. Hate to get on VPNs again, but uh, Ubiquity sucks for VPNs. Ugh. They have like the weakest security. You want to get hacked? Use Ubiquity for your gateway. And I just showed that big gateway, but it's it's free and it has a lot of power behind it so i might have weakened my security a little bit but man my internet's gonna scream <laughs> so security convenience it's always a thing how to install vmware on arch linux okay no vmware doesn't run on arch linux man uh What specs is for the new streaming PC? This is using a uh, 2700X uh, NVIDIA 1660, so I can get NVENC version 2 with the Turing chip, and 16 gigs of memory, and that's about it. So nothing too crazy. Uh, the chip, uh, this 2700X I got for 140 bucks. The motherboard is a gigabyte motherboard that I got for about 110, I think, right around. It was a combo deal with the processor, so I think I got both for about two ten because they took forty dollars off because of some coupon I had. I know I'm cheap, but yeah, really great PC, love it. But uh, yeah, it's a uh, it takes a little bit uh, to get up and going, but it's it's probably one of my f favorite builds, and I did it just so I have a background piece. I had the CTT, and I. Uh, I just didn't like that. I was doing like, I think I was doing a story, a YouTube story sometimes on mobile and how it flips everything and mirrors it. It messes. Yeah. I was just like, no, nope, can't do it. We got to take the letters down. I'm going to, I'm going to build a PC. So anything to build a new PC. Fun thing though. 
I didn't actually show you guys. But this down here is actually a new build. You can't really see it. Uh, this week on Twitch, I actually did the stream where uh, I basically ripped apart that Windows PC I was using for game streaming. I've been doing a lot of game streaming lately since we've been at home. I've been getting back into gaming. Yes. I'm going to be decent soon-ish. And uh, anyways, I was using it in a little mini ITX case. It was overheating, causing all kinds of problems. And I was like, hmm. You know what I could do? I can take all this components and put it in a giant NZXT case. So I got an N NZXT case for like 60, 70 bucks. And I was like, I'll make another thing and I'll turn it on side and you can see through it. And you can't really see it, but it looks cool. Maybe, maybe I can. Here, let me turn it. Ah, we're going to do it. We're going to do it. Ah, there we go. Uh, focus. And zoom, zoom, and don't worry, we're about to make it bright. Ah. Wow, that really didn't help at all. All right, well, good in theory. <laughs> oh, wow, that is really bright. Oh, I'm going crazy. Being at home. All right. Uh, it's crazy. <laughs> well, thanks for coming out. Simple Tech, everybody that kind of joined the chat, chimed in, asked questions. It's a hell of a lot of fun. Thanks, DT, for stopping by, too, man. Love, love DistroTube. If you haven't... Ah. If you haven't, check out DistroTube's channel. He's great. I'm a patron of his. I love him. I absolutely love him. Actually, I got the drone camera. It's actually up there. It just looks like garbage because it's a Wi-Fi camera. <laughs> uh, but uh, so so much fun. I love this, guys. Thanks for stopping by, just chatting, kind of seeing the new setup. And uh, I'll probably do, I'm, like I said, I'm going to try and maybe do one of these a week as one, it's one less video I have to produce, and two, I just love doing live streams it's just so stinking fun and i don't have to edit videos which is fantastic oh my god editing videos sucks <laughs> oh one, one last question i'm gonna take bob's last question here your advice using linux for three months started with ubuntu install kde full task select didn't work right now cleaning a bunch of useless programs education delete gnome next ah so Ubuntu, if you delete GNOME, you're going to have some issues. Um, a lot of times it does not like that. Unless you're using like Ubuntu server and you installed it that way. Uh, regular Ubuntu, sometimes they do some customizations and integrations that are not great. If you're using Arch, I would say go for it. You know, Arch, you can do whatever the hell you want. But a lot of distributions, you can run into major issues when you uninstall the base desktop environment that comes with it. Ubuntu's is GNOME. You uninstall it. You uninstall its utilities you're probably gonna have a bad time. Um, that said, if you do wanna switch to KDE and you're on Ubuntu and you don't wanna reinstall it all that, I'm not saying you can install KDE. You can install it and then actually just select it from uh, a display manager. So the display manager is SDDM and KDE. In uh, the other one, uh, for GNOME, it's GDM. For that, you might do LightDM. If you go on ChrisTitus.com, I did an entire video and also a walkthrough page for light DM. You can actually configure light DM to do both GNOME and uh, SDDM, or you could just use SDDM and switch to Plasma as well and do a depackage dash reconfigure for Debian, I think, uh, and uh, get going there. So you can reconfigure the, that package and reselect your display manager rather easy, but don't uninstall GNOME. You're going to have problems for sure. So thanks a lot, Bob. Thanks a lot, guys, for everybody coming out um last question what is proxmox john that is a virtualized thing that's uh these two boxes i have some old third gen i5s one u boxes so these are two computers up at the top they're pieces of crap but i put proxmox on them and i run vms on them so uh that's uh basically a way to install a bunch of different uh stuff without uh without ever leaving or installing or messing up your main PC. So 
I can actually show you real fast. Hey, we'll, we'll just end real fast. I'll, I'll cut this out and post. Uh, <laughs> this video is going to be processing overnight anyways. So, uh, let's see. We'll go back to primary. Now, this is Proxmox. So, uh, I, I have a bunch of things. Those two PCs are this PVE and PVE2. I have Solus. We have Arch Linux on here. We'll go ahead and shut down Arch. Um, and it just kind of sends a shutdown command. You'll see on here it'll actually shut down in a perfect world. Shut down. Yes. All right. Well, maybe not. We'll log in and shut it down. Uh, it might be missing the QEMU agent. So we'll go ahead and hit shut down. Um, just so it's not running. I, I try not to run those machines too hard because it just heats up like a crazy person in here. I feel like I'm about 80, 90 degrees in this room right now. That's no exaggeration. Fahrenheit, not Celsius. Uh, but yes, and I do use just window manager for those out there wondering. Yes, of course, because you just can do everything so darn easy on a window manager once set up properly, but I don't recommend it starting out. Uh, challenge no de window manager run firefox and games and everything uh i need to do another challenge video sebastian it's been a while man it's been almost over a year now so i need to do another one for sure all right, all right guys i'm gonna shut it down for today thank you all for hanging out it is a hell of a lot of fun i'm gonna do a lot more live streams coming up uh as i said yesterday's stream today's stream uh, Monday, I'm going to probably produce a video because nobody likes watching a rerun of a live stream all the way through and, uh, you know, got to appease the YouTube gods. So I will definitely be producing videos, uh, for Monday and then also one on, uh, usually Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. I've done that for about a year now. Um, and, uh, I'll continue on that schedule. I'm still getting used to being at home all the time all the time uh, you all hang in there man i'm under quarantine as well so uh, i'm on full lockdown so we're not even leaving the house and uh thank god we have youtube that's all i gotta say <laughs> but with that guys see you later uh and i'll see you in the next one um check me out on monday it'll be a video though i won't be live streaming and with that later <laughs>